It's the official revote revo <laughs> results of the January 2021 Patreon mega voting extravaganza a thon. This blue orange bell goes out to all the Patreon folks. Thank you so very, very much for your support. We won't talk about how I botched this operation other than what just happened in the last few seconds. But the clear plurality goes to Eddie Vedder's rendition of Neil Young's The Needle and The Damage Done. Patreon folks, thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. But here's the thing, the Eddie version and the Neil version are almost exactly the same, the difference is being stylistic. Eddie Vedder's finger picks more, Neil Young does more fancy stuff, so what I would like to do is go through the basic chord structure, and then I'll show you how Eddie treats it, and I'll show you some of the things that Neil does, and this way you can pull from those two buckets and make your own rendition of Eddie's rendition of Neil Young's song. But the chord progression is gonna be D. Followed by C add 9, there's going to be several ways of doing this, but we'll start with Eddie's C add 9. It's going to be middle finger on A3, ring finger stays on B3, you're going to naturally mute the D string. We of course don't want to hear the low E string for this C add 9 of sorts. Followed by G with a B in the bass, A string goes down to 2, pinky finger is going to grab the E string 3rd fret, this is Eddie's treatment anyways. And then we're going to a weird B flat chord with lots and lots of stuff in it, or a G minor chord, depends on how you look at it, but it's gonna be A string first fret, ring finger remains on the B string third fret. Then a C, this is where the thing happens, followed by F. E suspended four, which is E, the one with the pointer finger on the G string first fret, plus your pinky finger on the G string second fret, and we bothered to put our pointer finger there because that's kind of what we always do, and we're gonna let it resolve to regular E anyways. So, D, C add nine, G with a B in the bass, funny chord, C, F, E suspended four, and regular E for the chord progression. I'm allergic to finger picking. I'm gonna use my pick, but you can use your fingers for this if you like. Eddie, of course, does not use the same plucking pattern throughout the whole entire song, and you shouldn't either. You can get comfortable with something and then let it ebb and flow as your whims whimsy away, or you could just strum it, but I'm gonna give you a good place to start. On the D chord, start with your middle finger off of the baby E string, and we are going to pluck D, B, G, open E, G, E2. If you think of that first pluck, the D string pluck, not so much as the D string, but as the bass note of the chord, the rest of this becomes a lot easier because you've pretty much already done it. The bass note for the C add nine is on the A string. Almost everything else is gonna be the same. So bass note, B, G, E, G, and I'm gonna pluck B last instead of E this time. Same exact thing for the G with the B in the bass same exact exact thing for the weird G minor chord. So the first half which brings us to the C thing, the cowboy thing, you're gonna give a down up on your C chord and then your right hand's going to get scientific. We want to pluck the open D string and hammer back onto two with your middle finger before you pluck your open G string. Now the G string is what we want to hear most here, but you can kind of strum everything and you're going to kind of mute everything you don't want to hear anyways, but we're going to hear open G string, middle finger for G2, pinky finger for G3, back to G2, G open, regular C. So, go back to a plucking pattern similar to what we were just doing with our E suspended four and regular E. Putting all that together. verses are the exact same except for instead of the cowboy thing you just play a C and then play an F and then go to your E sus4 so that 
that's everything there is to say about what Eddie does. You know, you can make that D as fancy as you want. Because he does different stuff. Whatever you like to do with that E string on the D chord, all fair game. On with Uncle Neil. You already know how the song goes now, so I don't have to belabor any points. The first thing that Neil Young does different is he's strumming, and he's kind of very laboriously, lugubriously going down. And when he goes down, it's mostly bass notes, you know, relatively speaking, in the chord, the lower of the strings, and up, which is mostly higher strings, so... And he still does his thing on the middle finger on the D chord, the E string, when he goes to the C add 9 chord, on the G with a B in the bass, he does not add his pinky to the baby E string, it's an open E string. Same deal with the G minor, no difference there. By the way, that was a completely accidental use of a good word. Lugubrious means looking or sounding sad and dismal. So. When we get to the cowboy thing, the C, I'm trying to be more lugubrious for this lugubrious song. When we get to the C thing, it's going to be all the same up until, up until we're going to do the G string third fret. At this point, your pinky does go to G3, but your ring finger also goes to D3. This is now an F suspended four chord. Then we're going to descend on an F chord. So middle finger is going to take over on G2, G open, and then pluck the D string third fret. That's a big difference in Eddie versus Neil's version. Neil descends on an F chord and hence hits the F note on the D string third fret instead of the E note on the D string second fret because Eddie stayed on the C chord. But here we go. F sus four, back down. F note and then the same stuff for the E sus four and the E but one last thing very last syllable before we go back into the D chord is Neil Young makes a point of hitting that open A string. A is the fifth note of the D major scale. The fifth really wants to go back to the one, being D. Maybe that's one of the reasons why he did it, or maybe he just did it. Anyways, switch to F and walk down. A string, kind of strum away and you will get an A note. The next thing of note is what Neil Young does at the end of the E section. Of course we have our E suspended four. Regular E followed by. There's two ways to do this. I didn't bother to check which one was right. They both get the same basic thing done and you might prefer one over the other and who am I to tell you what you should and should not do. But either way you're gonna start the same way we did with the C chord and the hammer on, it happens at the same time. So give your E a down up. Then you're gonna hammer on to the A string second fret with your middle finger. Give stuff some strums there. And then your ring finger is gonna slide up from two to four on the D string. You can abandon everything else. And then you can either go back down two frets and just strum from the D string down. It's still a one finger deal. We've got an E minor chord, just not as much of an E minor chord as we could possibly play, just the four strings. The emphasis is really on that G note. That's why I don't want to put the whole E minor back. The other way to get that G note is just slide up one more fret on your D string. And we've got two of that G note. That's an E minor chord with too many of the same G notes. So you pick. Or. Either one. I'm aware that the album version is a live unplugged version. Nevertheless, I am looking at the live unplugged uh, version on YouTube where we get to watch Neil playing it. There's some more cool stuff. The first one, I don't know if I hear it or if I just want to hear it, so I'll show you, and you can do it if you want. It certainly fits. But on the D chord, we're going to do our two open two thing. And then you can actually do that over all of the first half of the chords. The C add nine, you're going to use your pointer finger. For the G with the B in the bass, you're going to use your middle finger. And I definitely didn't hear him do it on the G minor chord, but you can if you want. That's for you to consider. In this version, when he gets to that E suspended four, he gives all three of those notes a big hammer on. And then going back to the regular E chord, he hammers on from open to one on the G string. In the verse, 
notice when he plays the C and the F chord, the regular way, not the cowboy way, he adds a high G note to the C chord and to the F chord. So on the C chord, put your pinky finger on the E string third fret and leave it there for the F. Back into the D chord from the E chord, we heard him go. Uh, I watched his hand. I don't think he slid up, but that's a fancy thing to do. You might want to be fancy. I mean, you could hear just the B string is that note we want to hear, but you could slide up to the G string fourth fret as well. Works the same way, just like the other thing that had two options. Going fancy. I hate to bring this video to a precipitous end, but I'm satisfied. Thank you so much for being here. I hope that was fun and helpful, and I will see you next time with more stuff. Goodbye.